Another quartz watch. Um, this is a Skagen. It needs a crown. It has no crown, so I wasn't able to test it. Um, hopefully when I open it up, it has a winding stem. But you know what? I paid a buck for it. So for one dollar, this one came home. I'm hoping this one dollar flea market watch can be fixed with a new crown, assuming there's a winding stem inside. The crystal needs to be polished or maybe replaced, and the case needs polishing. These are all skills that I've been learning, and this cheap watch will be good practice. Yay, the winding stem was inside. Let's take a closer look at what we have. So here is the dial, and uh, a little bit of dirt around the edges. I think that can be cleaned up. It's a pretty basic design, and here, let me flip it over. Take a look at the movement. Uh, Miyota no jewel movement. Uh, pretty basic quartz movement. The crystal itself is kind of interesting. Um, the crystal is, it's like a magnifying glass. Can you see that on the overhead shot? And it is just beat. Look at all those scratches. And I wasn't sure, I, I think it's glass. Um, I tried to uh, use the, uh, the polishing sticks on this and it really, it didn't do much. Um, so I understand that you can tell it's glass from the sound. So, yeah, I, I don't think I've ever tried this using this drumstick with an acrylic crystal. But if this is glass, then that's what glass sounds like. Um, I'm just gonna trace it. I'll measure the uh, diameter. In fact, I will do that right now. So it's very possible that you might also find an inexpensive watch that just needs some love. And, and I think this is pretty typical of what you're going to find in a, a flea market watch. Let me see, put on the thicker. 28.5. Okay. 28.5 millimeter. So when I order a replacement crystal, you uh, move the decimal point one step step one decimal to the right, so this would be a 285. One more time, just to make sure. Yep. And how thick is it at the edges? Let's take a look here. One point four five one. So we'll call it 1.5 at the edge and at the height of the dome. Wow, that's tall, 3.85. So I don't know that that really matters. Um, 1.5 edge, 3.9 middle, domed glass. The next issue is this. So this is the winding stem. There was a winding stem in there. And I don't know if it's broken or if it just lost its crown, if it got decrowned. So I bought a bulk pack of replacement crowns. This is an assortment pack and it has matching um, silver ones and gold colored ones. So I guess the first thing that I want to see is, I want to see if I could find one that fits the case. And, you know, let's, let's just see. So what we want, oops, almost dumped them. I, there's, there's adhesive on the outside. I wish they would tape these with uh, cellophane tape that doesn't leave adhesive because I want to put it down and then it's stuck to my finger and that could have been quite noisy and, uh, I'm sure I, I wouldn't be a proud owner of as many of those little crowns at the end of the day. We need one that will fit. Okay, we need one smaller because there's a, uh, a crown guard on here. As part of the case, it has that crown guard built in. Um, so we need a crown that's going to be smaller and the diameter of this one is too big. In this kit, there are uh, crowns that are flush with the crown, uh, where the little threaded section is flush with the crown. And then there's crowns that have longer extension tubes. 
So this crown sticks out a little bit further and this looks like it's about the right size. So here it is and if we push that in so you can see that there's just enough clearance that it turns and it's being protected by the crown guard and when it's in the in position it doesn't protrude and we can see just enough of a thread in here uh, inside the crown tube that hopefully we'll be able to um, thread it onto the stem. So let's give it a try. And I'm hoping this is a standard thread and it feels like it is. There we go. Yeah, it feels like that thread is is matching. So let me put this in a pin vise so I can get a better grip on it. So I got this set of pin vices. I guess that's the smallest one. Makes sense to start with the smallest one. There we go. Let's put the movement into the watch. Now I, I pretty much think that this is going to be typical of of any watch that any of you, my my much appreciated viewers, you might also pick up a watch like this perhaps at a flea market or somewhere or you might have a watch like this in a drawer that's broken and uh, so yeah while this isn't high horology this is probably a good repair just to uh, just to know okay let me just adjust this just a little bit because I don't want it going in at an angle and when we get it close it should click and then we'll get an idea of whether or not this is a, a solid repair. There we go. Did it click? Well, let's see if it's if it's in. We should be able to pull it out a click and set the hands. Let's see. Well, that's good news. That's not good news. Let me see, is this winding stem properly seated? So that's one. Let's see what this, what does that position get us? Is that the, uh, the date? Yep, there we go. All right, so the date's setting. And then let's go out one more, click. And it wants to set the hands, so what's going on here? Hmm, it's like it wants to set. Let's see, is the hour hand turning? No, hour hand's not turning. I thought maybe one of the hands was loose. Well, folks, I was hoping this was going to be an easier fix. Well, here's what I can tell you. In the in position, we probably can shorten the winding stem just a little bit. Check for zero. There's zero. So we're only talking about one millimeter. So we have about one millimeter more that this can go in. Where's my specialized crown removal tool? Here it is. It's just a sewing pin with one of those plastic heads on it so I can find it. You have to press in the winding stem all the way. You press down on a little spring and then it pops out. Okay, I'll unscrew that. I have the winding stem firmly in the pin vise, and I have almost exactly two millimeters, just shy of two millimeters, sticking out. So I know what I want to do is I want to remove a millimeter, so that means what I'm simply going to do is just check this from time to time. I'll be filing it with this metal file checking it from time to time and my goal here is since I know I have two millimeters sticking out I want to reduce it until there's just one millimeter sticking out. This is just a, uh, a rubber like a rubber anvil um, just a 
heavy chunk of rubber and I'm putting this post-it note on it if I can pick it up and I'm putting the post-it note on here um, only for visibility just so you have contrast so you could see it um, in the camera I don't know how quickly this is going to grind down so I'll probably give it I don't know like like 40 strokes and we'll do a measure All right, well, it's, it's going in the right direction, but we're not there yet. Now, I could have used uh, nippers and just sort of bit that off. So I did raise... Oh, <laughs> like, where'd it go? It's on that side. I just want to see if I can knock off that burr. I don't want to ruin the thread. But I want to reduce that burr. Yep, yep, there's still thread on there. Okay. So here we go. We have our shortened winding stem. So let's see how we did. Go over here. And now, ha, got more than we bargained for. Did you see that? That movement ring popped up. Okay. Now, did we click? Here's the test. Yeah, I think we're locked in place. Okay, so this is now a good length. So it's in the out position. Now, I don't know, are the hands working now? No, the hands are, are still kind of freewheeling. So we might dig into the movement, but what I really wanted to uh, show in this video was how to fit that new crown. This was kind of like the lottery. It could have been that it just needed the new crown, um, a better looking crystal, and a battery, uh, but that's the, that's the crapshoot that you take with uh, flea market watches. If you want to stick around, I think I'm going to pull this apart some more and see if I can't get into you know whatever the keyless works are in this quartz movement just to see if I could figure out why it's not setting. In the meantime I hope you learned something uh, seeing how to replace that crown. Hopefully that's all that's needed we can find the solution. Um, I got to show off my new set of uh, replacement crowns and uh, actually this this one looks good. Now I just hope I can get the rest working. My name's Mike. The channel is Watch With Mike. If you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching. Be good, be well, and be safe. And I look forward to our next time together. Bye-bye. All right, let's take this apart. Let's take that winding crown back out. So crown on the in position. There we go. We can do the flip over trick. Did you see what I just did? I was too aggressive and I bent the second hand. Did I just do that now? Let's take these hands off. Can we do this? The problem I've been having is they get hung up on the markers. eBay find a little squeeze. It did its job. Take off that movement ring. And is it clean underneath? Why, yes it is. That way you can pick up the batteries side to side, but you don't want to pick up the batteries front to back or you'll short them out. Yeah, there we go. And is there a dial washer? So there's our dial. So there's the date wheel. What can we see? Can we see anything suspicious? I'll tell you what I can see is that all these little gears are made of plastic. And there's a third position, good. Let's move over to the microscope and let's see if we could see what's either working or not working. We're in crown position one. Here's a look at the mechanism that quick sets the date when you turn in one direction, but disengages in the opposite direction. Oddly, the little claw reminds me of the kids game, Barrel Full of Monkeys. All three positions of the winding stem appear to be snapping positively into place. 
I still don't see anything obviously wrong, so let's go in deeper. the point of no return. Let's just take them apart, what do you say? So let's just have some fun. Oh, and look at that spider. That is the thinnest looking part, gear, cog, or is it a symbol of a secret society? You know what? I think we just found our I think we just found our setting culprit right there. I'll put that under the microscope. I I think that that's one of the setting gears and it just looks completely chewed up. So I'm, I see three posts, one, two, three, and my guess is if I pry this up, then that will release some of the other uh, plastic retainers. Let, let's give that a try. Yes. Yes. like the feeling of when you've come to terms with the fact that you're not going to be putting something back together and you're just taking it apart because it's fun to take apart. This freed this center wheel, will this lift out? Thanks for hanging in there. Consider this 
bonus content, bonus footage. Um, yeah, that was fun for me. I hope you enjoyed it as well. You wouldn't believe how tiny these little screws are. I know I just said the word tiny and I almost blew one of these wheels off of my workspace here. Um, the one thing I do want to do is find that damaged gear and just see how damaged it was. Yeah, that's the guy. And I think this is why it wasn't setting. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's no way. There is no way that this is going to come back together. So I guess is the right thing to do to just say forget it for this project? Maybe. Or, uh, yeah, maybe I'll pick up another movement. Don't know. So these are the decisions that one must face. Uh, as you can see, just because it starts out as a $1 or $2 watch, um, that doesn't mean that's your final investment in the project. Well, thanks for hanging in there with me. This is Mike. Be good, be well, and be safe. I look forward to our next time together. Bye-bye.